Joey gets a shout out, but not me, L. You're right. Guys, this is Dylan. This is D Goat. This is Dylan. He basically single handedly built Pole Racing's garage, our Discord, uh, along with, I mean, other people have jumped in, but he started this thing. He also streams. Let's check out some of his clips. I would call these two clips the highlight of Dylan's career, the best he's ever made it happen. In the Mustang, Corkscrew Laguna Seca, he's going to get dove by a McLaren and get shipped off of the track. Also, this absolutely legendary Forza Motorsport stream. It's nine minutes long. On lap one, we are at Hockenheim Ring, right up behind this guy, possibly an opportunity for a move. He's gonna, looks like he's actually gonna back out. The guy ahead still tries to meet the apex as hard as he possibly can, and everybody's dead there. We love you, Dylan, we love you. This is the car, this is the track, and this is a 336 pound man doing a backflip. None of us have any excuses, none of us. Actually, well, some of us probably have an excuse. So we are at VIR. We are way in the back of the grid. You can see just how many people are ahead of us. As car number 11, starting in P12 with a fairly abysmal qualifying time, uh, 1.3 seconds off of pole position here. Lap one, let's get underway. My new launch, mm, baby. We didn't nail it, but we got pretty close to nailing it. Uh, we, we are still under fire from the guy who started behind us. So this is P13 moving up the inside. We'll get a view from the car behind us. We go two wide into the first corner, three wide up ahead of us. That's sure to bring some chaos. And the chaos actually starts from further up the field. And we're going to gain two positions there and uh, end up dropping behind that car number 15. Now that chaos started from this guy in the dirt shout and livery. I don't know what the fuck he's doing. <laughs> that, that was absurd. Uh, totally missed his braking marker. Another guy follows them wide behind. Both of them go off the track. We avoid all of the chaos. Got net positive one position there. Still kind of looking up the inside of car number 15, but he is going to clear us and move ahead into, I think this is turn number three. We have a car on the outside here, so we're going to have to hold it slightly tight. Car number 13 behind us. And he's going to look to go up the inside into the first little bit of the S's side by side through the entry. We are going to slide back ahead as he kind of backs off there and realizes that, you know, too wide after seeing three people die on the first lap is probably not the best idea. We survive, baby. We're in P11. We moved up one. Most of the chaos has surely got to be over at this point, right? I hope so. I don't know. 0.8 seconds ahead, half a second behind us. We're in a good spot. Tons of slipstream on this track. You'll see the back straight that we're coming up to right now. It's extremely long, so it's super easy to stay attached if you're within like 1.2 to 1.5 seconds of the car ahead. And we are vastly within that range of car number 15 up ahead of us. We are 0.3 seconds uh, just about heading onto the straight and it's hard to describe exactly how long this straight is. It is massive. You hit sixth gear like halfway down the straight and there's a massive overtaking opportunity at the end of it. We're gonna see firsthand what that looks like as P5 looks to take P4 from the purple and black car. They're going around the outside. Really unfortunate as car number five makes contact and car number four goes flying off to the side there. To be fair, um, he kind of cut car number five off. Tried to go around the outside and then kind of reclaim more space on the inside than I think he was uh, destined to have there. So we move up two positions actually, or uh, excuse me, one position from that. The other car rejoins. So we're up into P10 now. Blue car went off into the wall and chasing down Andy still. Andy looks like he has a good opportunity to make a move on Aiden, who was the car ahead of him. Two cars ahead of us as we cross onto lap number two. And everybody is in pretty close proximity to each other. P8 is going to move to the inside, heading into turn one. Successfully defend that one as car number 15 doesn't really want to go around the outside. They would rather settle into a single file line and try and stay closer to the cars P7 onwards, which I think is a good decision. Opportunity is going to open up for us here as a few cars ahead. The orange and white car, hard to see, but he is off the track. So as he rejoins, we are just going to have enough pace to slip up the inside. Almost looks like we're going to go up the inside of car number 15 there as well. We were actually side by side with nine there, who's trying to maintain the inside, dashing to the next apex. We're going side by side through the S's and I've got the outside. I turn in a bit early there um, and refuse to lift as much as I probably should have. Make contact with him, which kind of puts him in this position to hold back the guys behind me. And we'll take a look at the cockpit view of that all the way through there so you can see. I was trying to give space. And I mean, looking at it from this view now, especially after seeing the outside view, I definitely could have given a bit more here. I, I tried to stay on that left side, but uh, once I realized that it was cooked, I just dove back onto the racing line. 
thankfully everybody survived there and, and that's super positive for me we're still just barely in slipstream of andy up ahead and the car behind is under some heavy pressure from the car behind him going up those s's so i'm hoping that they, those guys will kind of fight and pull themselves away from me and i i think that i should be able to keep up with andy ahead once we get onto this straight the slipstream could kind of suck me pretty close to him already the gap is pretty massive behind somebody's going off back there both of these guys slide out in unison getting onto the straight and that opens up the gap behind me to a safe distance to where I don't even think I'm being slipstreamed at this point. By lap number four, they are totally gone behind. We're back on Andy up ahead. So looking for P8 from him. I'm not in a huge rush. We have 14 laps total. So that's what, 10 laps to go. A lot of time in this race. And uh, I think I'd, I, I probably underestimated how much chaos there would be in these races. I was thinking this would be like a pretty clean week. Um, I think because I've been driving so much time trial by myself. So there's nobody else on track and I just forgot about how much chaos there was, especially with the massive amounts of slipstream on this track. It just yielded so many dives and I think so, so many like miscalculations on braking. You have a lot more speed when you're in that slip on the back straight and on the pit straight that we just went through. So two over about three seconds to the car behind. We have a massive gap there. I'm just about in the range where I should be looking to make a move on this guy. I'm not really risking losing a position at this point. I guess I could risk losing grip to the cars ahead as he's about a little over half of a second away from the car ahead of him. If we make like, you know, two corners side by side that could end up putting us both off of those guys and then potentially out of slipstream and then potentially unable to catch back up to them and as strong as the slip was this is a pretty good display that it's not always going to yield you a greater run it, uh, like you really need to have a better exit there relative to the person ahead of you unless they have no slipstream and he does have the slipstream ahead of him so you'll see that i actually don't gain really any time here because he's still gaining speed basically at the same rate that i am so uh i, I really need to start focusing on getting a better exit there because you can't just rely on the slipstream. It'll definitely help, especially if the person ahead of you is kind of on their own without the aid of slipstream. Or you just, I mean, really, you just need to get a good run there. Otherwise, I mean, you just need to be fast. I was, I was just not driving fast at this point. However, another way to pick up that position or potentially close that gap is to have people start fighting. So we're in this little group of four and the guy at the front of this group, P6, has no slipstream. So the entire group should start condensing and that should bring out some opportunity for fighting, be it between P6 and 7 or P7 and 8. I am at the back, so I have the advantage of just trying to kind of pick up the pieces when something goes awry. And by lap number nine, here we are, P7, Aiden looking for a move on P6 around the outside of turn number one, hopping on board with P8 behind us. He's watching them go side by side through turn one. It doesn't look like uh, P7 is gonna make that overtake stick. So he's gonna move behind, which is fine with me as the car in the back. Worst case scenario, I just get to gain some free time because of them fighting and they were fighting. This guy was looking for a move, peeping up the inside of there as well, trying to get this guy to maybe get thrown off of his line. Shout out to this livery, by the way. I There's too much there uh, to really describe, but I thought something that obviously has had that much work put into it should be called out and attention called to it. He actually cut one of those uh, S's, so he's going to pull over to the side and place that beautiful livery behind us. So we move up into P8. I'm pretty sure that happened. Either he was like too close to the car, couldn't quite see his lines, or also the dirty air through that sector is pretty, pretty tough. Sector two with dirty air can, can be a bitch. Very easy to uh, go deep there. Closing up the gap to P7 at the end of the straight, hot on his tail as we cross, getting ready to cross onto lap number 10 here. And we do have Aiden uh, in the meme livery behind us, hot on our tail. So I'm keeping that in the back of my mind, but obviously most of my attention is focused on the car ahead who goes slightly deep through that exit. So it shouldn't give him the greatest run you've ever seen. If I were to make a move here, it would still have to be a pretty massive dive. Three tenths behind is a lot, uh, but you know what? Fuck it. We're going out the inside. Um, I actually under broke there and well, I, I think actually he over broke because I wasn't really looking for that move. We end up going side by side though. We're on the inside. He's trying to hold this tight on the outside hard thing to do but we can still go too wide through here he's going to try and find that space and we're going to make a little bit of contact it doesn't even look like we're really making contact there but somehow we did he gets thrown to the left side car doesn't spin and we move up ahead here is the view from the car behind i'm not sure i mean was this it was a little bit it was like we had a little bit of a force field um whatever i don't know we, we would have made contact either way, but I was trying to hold him a bit tight there. I didn't want him to get a great exit because I wanted to be ahead of him as racing goes. And we are now hopefully going to be able to pull away from Aiden behind, who was under slight fire from Andy. 
through those S's. Seven tenths, we're not quite where we need to be, but we still have the slipstream of the car ahead, so we're able to kind of pull closer to him slowly. Aiden is hot on our tail at this point. One tenth behind us, potentially could look for a move up here, and I think that gets into my head because I send it way too hot in here. A little bit of a slide, and it looks like a small mistake, but it's pretty devastating for me because not only does that uh, keep these guys like literally attached to my rear bumper, but it's going to see me drop off of the car ahead. I think I'm still in slip, but it's not nearly as strong. So this is going to be more of a defensive race and locking up into turn one is not going to help. So painting the track a bit, going deep. Thankfully, you can cut back and still get like a fairly good exit and it makes up for some of the time lost. But uh, yeah, I I'm under fire at this point, trying to back up Aiden a bit here and give myself some room, taking a really, really shallow line, kind of parking it on the apex there. 15 looking for a move as it seems my plan has worked out perfectly. And now they're kind of in a three-way battle behind, too wide through the S's, 15 goes off. We get to pull away, give ourselves some breathing room, and it looks like there's a new challenger back there in that blue car between Aiden and the other white car. That will be Juan Gomez, who's actually extremely fast. He's 7.3K, so I know that he's He's gonna put some pressure on Aiden, or at least I am hoping he is, and he's not just gonna bump Aiden towards me. Either way, it's not really gonna matter. I'm really hungry at this point, looking for a number seven combo from McDonald's, that's two cheeseburgers. I'm gonna get a large fry, but for the drink, can we sub that for a <laughs> bottle of water? Because here we go, straight off of the, oh my God, the last lap straight into the dirt just locking up losing three positions dropping back down to p10 <sighs> it was a hard fought bottle <laughs> hard fought battle oh my god i almost i almost bottled the word i did i bottled the word battle by saying bottle holy hell i i don't know what's happening boys Anyway, the race is not over. Oliver, car number three, chasing down car number five, looking to gain P4 from him. Let's see what goes on here. It's the final lap. Oliver is extremely fast. Gian up ahead, also a very, very fast driver. Although I have to say, I think Oliver is faster. He's a, he drives real life Miatas and other stuff. I don't know. But uh, let's hop on board so you can see the effect of the slipstream when the car ahead does not have slipstream. Look at this. You can hear it. You can hear the wind flying past. And he is, oh my god, he's moving up. Looks like he's going to make a move around the outside at the end of the straight. Giving space beautifully done there by Oliver to give space. Gian giving space as well. Super fair racing. Oliver dashes up ahead. Claims that position. Gian, I don't know what's going on through his head here. I, that had to have been a mistake. Drives over both of the apexes into Oliver. They're both off on the side. Here comes P6 Oh, it's going to be tight. Trying to find a way through. And it looks like he is going to drive off the track. Trying to do that. Aiden and car number four. This is Juan Gomez. Also driving up to the line. It looks like Aiden is going to slip ahead of Gian. I don't know what's happening here. Everybody is getting thrown all over the place. Aiden finishes in P6. Gian finishes in P7. And Juan finishes in P8. Meanwhile, I am still way back here. There's another guy that crosses the line before me. I'm going to end up crossing in P10. It is what it is. Yeah, I... I could have been a good one. Uh, I mean, it was still a very good race. It was a fun race, and I think I got a lot of experience about, like, where the big mistakes will happen, where the opportunities are. Beckham in the front, he's 12k. Nobody challenged this guy. Actually, the guy behind was pretty fairly close, but he, he won that one pretty clearly. P10, it is what it is. Like I said, we had opportunity. We dropped it. That's totally on us. Green in both areas still, so getting I rating and safety rating could always be worse, right? It could always be worse. Anyway, let's move on. Let's run it back. Let's do better. So people in this lobby were not as fast. We're starting P2 with basically the same time. We have Joey behind us and William and Colby Warren. Like everybody here is in the discord. Um, we all kind of like ha have talked drive together and there is Joey behind us in the beautiful livery as well. Lap number one. Let's see where we can go here. It's a decent start and actually actually a better start than the car ahead, but Colby behind gets a better start than both of us. Moving up the inside, we're going to make it three wide into turn one. But before we go any further, I would like to make a wager. Your like, your subscription, and click on the bell button, but only if I can make the octopus in the bucket. Let me explain. Okay, so there's the bucket. It's kind of hard to tell, <laughs> but the bucket is in the car. My girlfriend is going to be driving. She's right there. Hello. Wait, it's not focusing. Okay. Yeah, we might. We might be getting. Oh, wait, are they leaving? There's a cop over there. Oh, hell yeah, he's leaving. 
All right, so if you don't know the drill already, if I can make this octopus into that bucket while she's driving by, you have to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Okay, she's about to come, she's about to come through. Let's go, baby. If I make it in the window, go, go, go. Damn it. Okay, so the door shut when she took off just now, so we're gonna do it one more time, um, since I had no chance of making it in the bucket, really. That didn't count. So I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna help keep the door open and then I'm gonna run to the spot. All right, when you're ready. Yep, yep. Not too fast, not too fast, not too fast! <laughs> Whatever, not this time. I'll get you next video though. Oh yeah, look at my baby go, I'm driving stick. You win some, you lose some. I think I'm making that a bit harder for myself than it probably should be. Anyway, three wide into turn one. We are on board with Joey as we go. And I'm gonna get pushed a little bit deep there. I, I was trying to hold Colby slightly tight. So, I mean, can't really do much about that. Good racing to everybody involved. I'm gonna back out there. Joey actually slides ahead. So Joey up into P2, Colby and myself fall back a position each. And we have the cracking car behind us and then Will is behind him. Everything is up for grabs here. I, I feel we are just about all around the similar pace at this point. And coming through the S's, Will is gonna make a bit of a mistake here. You'll see his time drop from like 1.8 seconds down to like 2.5 and it's because he cut the S's somewhere, ended up getting a slowdown, so he pulled over to serve that, and then this happens. <laughs> what? So th there's actually an explanation for that. This guy, car number 16 here, uh, there's somebody else off the track. He has a massively better run than the cars ahead who are slowing down for each other, ends up making it three wide down the straight, and Will is serving his slowdown right here, so there's Oh, I, I, I think car number 16 thought that that car on his right side was a lot closer and wasn't giving him room, which I understand. That guy did move over to give him room on the right side, but I don't think 16 saw it. Anyways, it's a four times contact. Nobody was hurt too much. I think Will did end up getting damage from that. Uh, but I mean, he's in the back of the pack already. It's gonna be quite a battle for him. It is a nice little four way though going on here at the front of the pack as we head onto the straight four the first time. One second from the leader and about 1.3 seconds to the car behind. We're definitely gonna pull away a bit here because we have some pretty strong slipstream, but over time, if there's fighting going on here, he could very well get back into the slipstream and put us under pressure here. And it, a little bit of fighting there. It looks like Joey was kind of peeping around the outside. Colby kind of looking down the inside of Joey. Nobody actually does anything, but it does kind of just keep everybody probably like a 10th or two back than what they could do if we we're just running like a, a hot lap. On to lap number two, and the story of this race mainly took place on the straight. So as we get onto the straight for the second time, Joey is in a superb position here to look at making a move at the end of the straight. No slipstream for Matthew up ahead. Joey is going to be soaking that up, moving to what is the outside for the corner at the end of the straight. It's like kind of the inside for the first bit, but then the outside for the main bit of the corner. He's pretty far ahead, but Matthew making it work. I think Joey was pretty conservative out there on the brakes as well. Would have been a tight one as Matthew did go kind of deep there. So good look. And he kind of looks for a switch back there as well, but it doesn't quite open up. Colby thinking about making it too wide through this final corner, but I think he's smarter than that. So he's going to settle back and, uh, actually end up putting Joey under a lot more pressure than Joey is now putting Matthew under. Joey moving to the inside, but not enough. It was like a kind of half-ass defensive move. And I was actually on voice with Joey during this race and he was telling me like, man, I should have just moved all the way to the right there. And he's right. Boys, if you do not want somebody to go up your inside, move all of the way to the inside. Joey goes very deep through turn one. Is he gonna be able to hold it side by side with Colby? Not quite. Colby finds the grip. There's a bit of camber that pulls you around on the inside there and he's gonna get that move done. So Joey down to third, not too much of a panic there. Ton of race left. Joey, Colby, same pace, just about until Joey gets a bit of a slide going into the first little set of S's. He's driving through the dirt. I'm aware of him. I'm trying to give him a ton of space just in case he rejoined. So I'm staying like really far to the left there. End up losing a bit of unnecessary time myself there that I probably could have, you know, just, I could have stayed closer to Colby for sure. Uh, anyway, we are down to P3. Colby is 0.7 seconds ahead of us, so we're still in slip. Joey is still connected to us via Carl behind, who's kind of giving slip to him and soaking up the slip. 
from myself. If we don't make any real mistakes here, we should be able to close up the gap to Colby. And as I say that, we're going to drive extremely wide, giving us just about the worst possible run onto the straight, closing up the gap behind, which is going to help these guys catch me pretty fast, losing about seven tenths there to Colby and about six tenths to Carl behind, who's now soaking up the slip, which by the way, if you guys wanna have like a nice little workout session, anytime I say slip, slipstream, any of that stuff, this race, do a push-up. I'll put a counter on screen for how many times I've said it so far, and then you can count the rest. Just do a push-up every time I say it. He's on our tail. We got to have a good run through the entire lap. We just need to be fast, basically, because we aren't really going to be having that advantage so much anymore that we had from Colby using his slipstream. And uh, lap number four comes around. We put a decent little gap. I think the gap is probably just as much from me putting in, like, decent laps as it is from Carl putting in not so great ones. We are kind of slowly catching Colby as well. We've closed it by like a tenth or two and it was kind of like bobbing up and down around that area. He has the exact same gap to Matthew that I have to him so our pace should be fairly similar at this point. However, we're going to throw a wrench into that situation. Colby's going to go very deep at the end of the straight, move back onto the track and we're not going to get the position but we are right up behind him now gained about a second from that i mean good on him to not go deep it's super easy to go deep and go off the track there i've done it countless times uh so he saved that we, we slowed down a bit just to see you know if we could potentially navigate like a wreck didn't end up happening we've got car number eight on our ass as we cross onto lap number five plenty of time to go okay my focus has kind of shifted now i'm like if i could potentially stay with colby and get close enough i would like to push him and help him try and catch matthew 2.8 seconds seems like a lot, but it's really not because once you get into slipstream, that gap closes so fast and we actually give Colby a little bit of a nudge heading down this straight here. End up staying way too close for comfort there, which I mean, I wasn't going to hit him in the braking zone, but what I was worried about was like, I don't want to throw him off by him thinking I'm going to hit him. I don't want to slow him down basically. So I, I ease off a bit in that next little sector. I want him to go as fast as possible potentially catch this guy. It's a lot to ask, but it's not impossible. Matthew could make a mistake. Colby's pretty good about not making mistakes. So, I mean, anything could happen here. 3.3 seconds to Matthew at this point, as he is not really making many mistakes this race. I almost kill myself there, breaking in the grass, getting a bit of a slide, and that's going to kind of affect my run all of the way through the S's. I end up catching it, but losing about three or four tenths uh, off of Colby there. Carl will probably be closing up a bit from me behind. Never mind. I don't know if you guys saw on the relative, but there he is. He's in the wall behind us. We'll back it up just a bit to see how that happened. Super easy to do. Like I said earlier, when you're in the dirty air through this sector, it is extremely easy to get too, like, too antsy on the throttle, which I think happens to him. He's a bit impatient, goes into the wall, spins that car off the side. And now we have Joey behind us, who I don't, I haven't driven with Carl that much, the guy who just died, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that Joey is probably faster. So I think Joey will be able to catch us if not just like maintain the gap straight to us. I know I can't really afford to make any mistakes at this point. Maybe Joey could get up to us and kind of help us push towards Colby and we could both end up fighting past Colby. Another possibility that has entered my head at this point, but uh, it's, not, um, it's, it's, it's not taking all of my focus. More than anything, I just need to drive some clean laps. And the gaps basically stay the same until the final lap. Half a second to Joey, just over half a second to Colby up ahead of us into the first corner. 2.4 seconds to Matthew, so we were catching but it just wasn't happening quite fast enough. I do not get a great run through this first corner. I'm not super panicked about it though, because I do still have the slip from Colby. Like I would have to make a big mistake to lose that slip. And Joey behind isn't gonna make any egregious moves. I don't think it's the final lap or in the top four, no reason to do anything crazy. And the relative giving it away once again, we're currently in P3, but it says P4. I wonder why. It's like it's telling, trying to tell the future or something. So Joey is three tenths behind us. As long as we're in the slip to Colby, Joey should not be able to pass us on the straight. And that's really the last overtaking opportunity. So I just need to stay on the track. About eight tenths behind Colby, still in slip range. I'm fine with it. Just keep it on track, hit your apexes, and we should be able to bring home a P3. By the way, guys, I'm sorry about my voice. If it sounds like weird, it's actually so much better than it was. 
I've been sick. I left the garage door open and I got freezing cold one night and instantly got sick. We are hardly attached to Colby at this point. Joey is hot, hot, hot on our tail, but it's, it's not gonna be enough. Like I said, as long as we are using that slip from Colby, Joey's not gonna have any significant speed difference into what should be the last overtaking opportunity, maintaining P3, we're ahead of him, even giving ourselves a little bit of an extra break there because I'm, I'm just confident that we're gonna be able to drive this one home. And then for some reason, I don't know why I get on throttle so early, full throttle, too much steering, a little bit of a slide. It's going to create a speed difference. No, Joey, don't do it. He's up the inside. I'm going to bump him. <laughs> I, 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 fuck me. Fuck me. What the fuck? He's, he's in the grass. <laughs> Yeah, he, he, he beat us to the line. He got P4. I didn't even notice that Joey literally moved into the grass there. Once again, I just cannot stop bottling myself away. P4, I, I'm, still, I'm still happy with that finish. Overall, there weren't really too many mistakes that we made. It was, uh, the, the pace wasn't fantastic, but overall the race was clean. Good little celebration from Joey there. Checking the results. There we are. Decent finish. The U.S. gang bringing up the front of the grid there. Four U.S. drivers back to back to back. Green in both areas once again. And uh, it seems like VIR has it is going to be kind to us. It's been kind to us so far, but it's not super telling of the future. If you guys enjoyed and want to support me, please check out my channel and some of my other videos. And I'm willing to bet you'll enjoy those as well.